Excellent. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, so I'm going to talk about something that maybe you think really, but let's see what go. Let's see what happens. That's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, when I sat down and, and Steve said to me, "You can you can talk about any anything you want to, really." I thought, "Oh," and I thought, "Oh, I've got to wait information security." And he said, "Certifications and qualifications would be really good because I haven't got someone to talk about that." And I thought. What I could do is I could sit down, I can list every single security qualification there is, I can go through it slide by slide. And I thought that's a really good approach for the day before Easter. So I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about some concepts maybe, some principles, some ideas around the whole of what it means, what, I, what value and benefit it brings. And along the way, I'll probably kind of talk a little bit about my career and, and where, where I've come from and how certifications have helped me and helped some of my friends as well. So I'm going to start off with actually something that's important because I represent a professional body. I represent right now something like 108,000 people around the world who hold one of these certifications running down that part of that part of the slide. I myself hold the CIWSP, the Certified Information Systems Security Professional. Um, so I kind of have a little bit of a bias, you could say, but I also have a great responsibility because I'm representing their thoughts and their dreams as well, if you like, when I talk to you. That's what we as an organization want to do. And it's interesting because we talked about end users and we've talked about a whole range of things today who know a lot, who use a lot of IT, who consume a lot of IT, almost in some cases unconsciously yet they are still unaware that actually with the power they hold in their hands there are also great benefits and great risks. And what we want to do is we want to educate and train and, and pull ourselves along as a profession and pull the world along as well so that we can use the power of the technologies we have for, be for the better. Now for me, I apologise but that's what I do, I am a fellow of the BCS I'm not a member of the Southwest branch, I'm a member of the Kent branch. I am an IT professional, I write a lot, I lecture, I do a whole range of things and funnily enough someone mentioned being an ISO auditor, I actually am heavily involved in the creation of ISO standards. I was actually involved in the rewrite of 27001 2013 which was interesting. If you want to stick pins in your eyes I suggest you go to an ISO meeting it's less painful than dealing with the bureaucracy. Anyway, professionalism, certification, what, what, what do these words mean? And I, I looked around the web, this is the eye test slide by the way, for these, those of you at the back, tough. <laughs> for those of you at the front, you will be tested on this later. Um, this actually is defined uh, from the Australians and it's a long and very wordy document and I've, obviously it's there for you to read later, not today. These are the words I want to pick out. Profession is a disciplined group of individuals possessing special knowledge and skills. Medicine is a profession. Chemistry is a profession. My first professional qualification was a member of the Royal Society of Chemistry Charter Chemist. Yes, I can make things blow up. Not that I did. Often. Um, <laughs> we are, all of us who work in information security, a group of individuals who possess special knowledge and skills. Our skills are not widely distributed in our communities. In some cases, thankfully, but we'll come back to that one later. What we do is we apply it to help other people. We do. Every day we go in and we work in our organizations as security people, we're there to make our organizations perform better, to perform more securely, to make more money, whatever it may be. There is an altruism in what we do. Yes, in the end of the day, you get paid for it, you might get a bonus, you get recognition, you get all those wonderful things. There's a degree of altruism in this. Most professions, including ours, and certainly from the IC squared perspective, we have a code of ethics. Code of ethics can be very simple. Don't break the law. Do no harm. That's the Google one, if you like, but that's the basis of all the Hippocratic Oath in medicine. And those code of ethics define how you behave, how we behave, how we are perceived collectively as an organisation. BCS does it, and when people see you with letters after your name, 
they expect you to behave a certain way. When you go to a doctor, you expect them to have a very cold bedside manner, you ex <laughs> right? Because you know, especially surgeons and so on, the letters after their name indicate certain things to you. And finally, if you are a wrongdoer, the profession reserves the right to strike you off, to stop you practicing, to put your name through the mud. Edward Snowden was a member of ISC Squared. Notice the word I use there, he was. He went through our ethics process, though he wasn't allowed to attend the hearing, and he was kicked out. That's a profession. That's what I represent, what any of you who are members of any professional organization represent. And that's why I love that. Despite the fact it's so wordy, I think that really cuts to the heart of us. And if we want to be seen as professionals, then we act in a certain way. Not necessarily facing the same way in a lift, but we act in a certain way. So that's where I come from, is that engineers, doctors, IT people, security people, we're part of professions. The problem is, is that our profession is being built on the fly. Information security is now 25, 30 years old, if that, if that. In fact, IC Squared is now 26 years old, we were 25 years old last year, and we were formed out of a desire to apply engineering principles to computing. How long have engineering principles been around? This is a bit of a trick question, I think at least since the days of the pyramids and probably before. We're working in a field in an area where the technology, the tools that we use evolves at a blinding pace. Building bridges, one of, my, one of my interests is bridges, don't ask me why, it just is. One of my interests is bridges. Building bridges basically follows the same format and has followed the same format when crossing rivers for thousands of years. These days, they still get it wrong because it's difficult and it's complex. We're dealing with difficult and complex things and it's changing underneath us as we move. Now, for us in information security, we know that we need more of us. We need more interest, we need more awareness, but we also need more skilled people. So certification is a tool that allows you to sift, or professionalism is, allow, is a tool that allows you to sift the merely capable from the charlatan and the expert from the bullshitter. And experience these days isn't necessarily enough. You can have loads of experience, but it could be completely irrelevant to the needs of your employer. It could be you have loads of experience, but it's just the wrong experience. Or it could be you have loads of experience and none of you can prove it. And that's even worse. And then finally, of course, employers need something. <laughs> employers are inundated with CVs. They're inundated with people who want a job. A uh, previous organization I worked for, we recruit, we were looking for a security analyst. One role. We had 475 applications, including one from a security guard at Sainsbury's. Because he saw the word security and sent me in his CV. <laughs> 475 CVs and we, had, we literally just applied a simple filter. How many have got degrees? How many have got some kind of certification? That's 375 out the window straight away. That's one of the reasons why certification training matters because it's demonstrable to employers you have reached a certain level of expertise. So there are loads of certifications out there, like I mentioned, and I, I will be going through every single one of these in a minute, despite what I said earlier on, I'm just tricked you. There are loads. There are loads from our friends, the vendors. Cisco have a whole set of network certs and security certs, Microsoft, IBM, the list is endless. Think of a product and there's probably a certification out there. Great if you're a techie. Absolutely fantastic if technical, um, work in the technical sphere is what you want. But I have friends who have so many letters after their name, they actually have the entire Scrabble <coughs> alphabet. Then there are the ones that to me are much more important, which are about you as an individual. And these are the ones I'm going to talk about and, um, in the next couple of slides. And there are loads. Now notice here, I have been very clever. I have listed these in alphabetical, alphabetical order. 
I love the fact that we have brackets in our name. <laughs> You know, you know, up there's for thinking, down there's for dancing, right? Um, <laughs> but there are loads, and I, I just wanted to cover some of these off very quickly. So, obviously, you know, let's talk about it. So, personal certs, there you go, second eye test. So, we have the CIWSP, we have the CISM, CISM, we have CISA, CISA, we have CRISC, we have CGIT, we have CH, we have ISP, we have M. MISP, we have MBCS, yes, we have Security Plus, we have all these things. And what does it really mean? That. It's just alphabet soup, even to the initiated. And yes, it does say boo in the middle. I knew someone would find that. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> but actually, that's what it means, right? It's just a load of letters. Not necessarily. Like every language, like every profession, once you understand the key to the language, you understand the profession. I used to work for the Ministry of Defence. I used to work for an organisation that became Kinetic. My first ever job was working with the Admiralty Research Establishment in Poole. And I used to spend half of my time in the dockyard down the road. Literally, half my time. And I discovered very quickly, actually, that unless I got to grips with the world of TLAs, which are three letter acronyms, I, I would have no hope working with the military, working with the dockyard folks and working with the other colleagues from the Ministry of Defence. Of course, eating Oggy's pasties was also a good one for working with the dockyard guys, um, but that's a different story. <laughs> Still got the figure. Um, <laughs> but once you understand the language, you break it down, that's when you start to, to understand what these things mean. So here's, here's Adrian's rough guide to when someone rocks up and gives you, here's my business card with loads of initials after their name, here's what you should be looking for. The first one tends to be certified. Notice the choice of words there is very careful. It's certified, not certifiable. That's something different. In which case I suggest you call the police and a very good doctor. Um, but actually, that's important because certified means they have reached a certain level of achievement or attainment. They have done something. Hopefully, not just going online and buying a certificate for $5 from the Philippine Academy of Information Security, trust me, and then bringing it in. The second thing is, try and see if they've got something like IS in there, IT. Always a winner. If you want to employ someone in Information Security or in IT, try and see if any kind of qualification they have has those words in it. Not necessarily a guide to how good they are, but at least they may have some idea of what they're doing. The next one, of course, is security. <laughs> You'll be amazed at how many people go, oh yeah, um, this person looks really good. And you go through all their career and everything else, and there's not one mention of security or information security or IT. And someone goes, he, he or she will make a great analyst. Really? Uh, they know nothing about the topic. That's all right, we can train them. Yeah, so why not put them through the certification program then? Anyway, come back to that one. Next one is ethical. <laughs> some, some of the alphabet soup after people's name does have that word in it. Most of them don't. It's an assumption that because you have the letters after your name, you are ethical. You are professional. It could be, of course, that they put the word ethical or the initial E within their certification because they're desperate to prove they really are, which kind of might make you wonder as well. Then, of course, there are other ones such as professional, manager, auditor. Remember, the purpose of an auditor is to come in after the battle and bayonet the wounded. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> internal audit, if you rearrange all the letters, spells axe job on internal staff. But that's another, that's another one as well. Um, <laughs> and finally, hacker. Not many people put hacker after their name, funnily enough. However, there are certifications that actually have that, and one of those is CEH, which is Certified Ethical Hacker. So now you can see, once you start to understand and you pull apart those letters, what it actually means, and how you can use those letters as a guide to what people do, or what they say they do. So who has these certifications? Well, anybody who works in information security will probably have at least one of those. Some of them have multiple certifications. I have a friend, um, he, he, he works with me um, on various things related to the 
BCS, the British Computer Society. This is his, as far as I can remember, this is his full string of letters after his name. He is FBCS, CITP, CISSP, CISSP, IWSMP, CISA, which is that one, CISM, uh, member of the Institute of Information Security Professionals, which is the ISP one. Uh, he's then got about another five or six after it. He's an exam junkie. <laughs> he really is. I keep saying every two years, I, every time I do an exam, I say no more, and every three years I end up doing one. People have these, they may have multiple one of these. But the point is that actually they've put themselves through a process to get it. And because they've put themselves through a process to get it, it gives you an indication of what they do and how they think it should be achieved. So this is what they mean. There you go. You can pass an exam. These, by the way, are my certs. Uh, you can't read the numbers, so you can't steal them. Um, <laughs> so an individual can pass an exam. Yeah, anybody can pass an exam, right? How many of you pass? How many of you failed your driving test? It's an exam, right? Yeah, be honest. Best people pass second time anyway. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but you get the point. Anybody can pass an exam, right? Yes. Um, a good certification scheme will mean they have some experience and it's validated in some manner. Uh, so that they just can't pass an exam, they actually have to have done something in that field. It could mean that they've actually spent their own money to get it. That they're actually so interested in the topic or the field or they're so desperate to get in, they're prepared to spend their own money. And gaining some of these certifications can be quite expensive. Week-long training courses at two, three thousand pounds plus exam fees. You know, this is starting to add up as a big personal commitment. Um, they may want to get these things so they can blind you and have, you know, the, the business card with all the letters on the name. But again, they, that's because they may be looking as a, at these as a mechanism to stand out from the crowd, to be that little bit different. And we all like to be different, even though we all use the same platforms. No, no Facebook page is ever, the, is ever the same if you look across them. And finally, you know, it may be that because of what they've done, the profession applauds their abilities, their knowledge, their skills, and has given them some form of award, some form of certification in recognition of their achievements. So now you can start to sort of re-pull these ones across and start to say, oh, okay, so, you know, hmm, Adrian's got that and he's got that. What does that really mean? And we'll come back to that one in a minute. So what they can tell you as well is what they should know. Um, this is what I had to learn or have knowledge about to pass my CISSP exam. There's 10 domains. Uh, it covers everything from the focal length of CCTV cameras to how AES 256 bit encryption works to access control, blah, 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 blah. Right, and I had to kind of know that stuff. The, the most difficult one was cryptography. I'm not a mathematician. It's one of the reasons why I became a chemist. Um, and my first question was about cryptography. And I sat in the exam and thought, oh, it's going to be a long, long day. But it wasn't, thankfully. It also tells you something about the level of experience. So people like the BCS, ISP have tiered membership. You're an associate, which indicates you only have a couple of years of work experience, or you're just starting out. Then after three or four years, you may become an M, a member which indicates, again, that you're moving up that professional ladder. And if you get to sort of fellow or, or some of the other uh, terms that are used, professor, it means you are an expert in your field. You are a, you're attaining that guru status. Um, of course, there are some people who don't have it, who don't have any of these certs, who are known as gurus. But we live in a world that more and more wants the reassurance of credentialization, more and more wants the reassurance of certification and so on, and they're becoming less and less. You could argue that's a bit of a pity, I kind of agree, but we live in a world that wants to reduce risk across the board in, in many ways. But also, as I said before, you know, it's about how you behave. It tells you something. You wouldn't expect to see a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons who was 22. Neither would you trust them. I certainly wouldn't. <laughs> However, if someone, very tall, thin, patrician looking, 55, 60, came up and said, I'm a fellow, then I probably would. You know, it's that, it's that strange sort of way our mind works as well. But it also tells you how you engage. So, all good, yeah, we're getting there, we understand all this stuff. What they can't tell you, they can't tell you anything about the individual. 
They can't tell you anything about me. Because you can, like, you saw, you know, you saw all the letters after my name. What did I tell you? It just told you maybe I've worked in computers, maybe I've worked in information security. Doesn't tell you whether I'm a psychopathic axe murderer who's very good at hiding it. I'm not. Well, not according to my latest personality test anyway. Um, but it won't tell you if they have the right skills and knowledge for your business. It tells you they have a level of knowledge. It won't tell you what they've done before. Where do they work? What did they achieve? How do they deliver? They won't tell you how good they were at doing it. And there are people who do walk around with lots of letters after their name who I know have never delivered anything in their lives. They work on the, on the three cycle. One period of time to get in the, in the job, second period of time to do something, third period of time to get out before they find you out. It's a good, good, credit, good career structure, but not necessarily one for me. Um, and the final one is, will they actually listen to what you want? And we have a lot of, I've seen this, we know this, right, the arrogance of professionals. I know what's good for you, do as you're told. Yes. <laughs> I just look at my doctor when he, says, when he says that, and I go, so, was it you down the pub last night? And he goes, shut up, Adrian. <laughs> That's the key. The certs indicate certain things. They don't tell you necessarily what you need to know about how that person will deliver what you need. So, thinking about this, right? Don't be dazzled by the letters. Just because someone has a string of letters after their name doesn't necessarily mean that they will be good for you. They only indicate certain things. They have limitations. Second thing is, don't use them as a shortcut to success. Don't sit there and go, right, we need loads of people who've got CISP or CISA or CISM and employ them on the basis of their CV says CISP or CISM or CISA. Because that's not going to work either. By the way, never put a CISP, a CISM, a CISA in the same room together because we'll all argue about exactly the same words and we know they all mean the same things, but we have to do it. It's part of our professional code of ethics. <laughs> um, think about people's experience. What have they done? Where have they been? Who have they worked for? Who have they worked with? Um, why did they do it? Why did someone spend £3,000 on, on, on a certification? Was it because they just wanted to be part of the club? Or was it because they wanted to learn more? They wanted to expand their horizons? They saw it as a, a way of changing their career? Always ask the questions. I'll put my hands up, right? I worked in information security for... One of the guys at the back will tell you at least... I'm going to lie now. At least since 1999. Yeah, that's the truth. About 1999. I did not get my CWSP until last year. There are two reasons, well, three reasons for that. Number one was, because I was an analyst, I spent lots of time doing strategic stuff and policy and program management all around information security. I didn't think I had the experience to get it. Second reason is, last year I got the job of managing director, and in my interview I said I would get my CWSP. <laughs> and the third reason is, you know what? If I'm going to talk about this stuff, I have to have one. Else I've got no credibility. Or I believe I have no credibility. So that's why I got my CWSP. And I'm quite open about that. Am I glad I got it? Oh, yes. But there you go, you see. Always ask why people have got them. And then, you know, the other side of this is just because someone comes into you and says, hey, look at me, I'm really good at this stuff. Look at all these letters. What do you really need? Do you need somebody who spent 35 years writing information security policies, which, by the way, are never read? The two most read policies in your organization are leave, how much time can I take off without getting caught, and, and expenses. When do I get my money back, even though I'm sure I didn't put the receipts in? <laughs> what do you need for your organization? What are the things that make the experience and the skills you need to complete your projects to make an organization work better. And also, you know, if you're bringing in people with this sort of knowledge, what are you going to learn from them? What are they going to share? What are they able to share with you? How can you tap into their networks to benefit you and them and your organization? This is all about 
And this comes back to that thing, you know, the particular set of skills that are used for the benefit of others. And if there's someone who sits in the corner and goes, well, I can't show you that, it's no, you're not a member, I kind of be worried. It's actually about this person. And if you're going to use and you're going to think about professionalism and you're going to use all these certificates and you're going to get them yourselves, and I hope you do or if you have them, some of this has resonated with you, it's all about you. At the end of the day, people will employ you. Your letters and your certifications after your name will be an assistance, but it's about you. It's about your credibility, how you work with people, whether or not you believe you can help them, they can help you, whatever it may be. And finally, will at the end of that relationship, including the time you spend in your professional body, has it helped you achieve the things that you really wanted to achieve or the things that you needed to achieve? That for me is one of the key things here about all of this, is the letters are part of the person but actually it's the person who really counts. Thank you.